Me too. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Awesome. You just have to share the screen, right? You just have to share the screen. Here we are. So my name is Gabor Sabo. And before I get to the content of this talk, let me introduce Rafa. Let me give a little background about myself. I've been programming for almost 40 years now, uh, 25 of them uh, in Perl, a lot of Perl writing. Uh, more than 10 years I've been writing Python and Crystal, well, 30 days. Actually, it's already 60 days since then. Uh, it was 30 when I uh, submitted my uh, talk proposal. In addition, I've been um, teaching programming for more than 20 years, primarily in high-tech companies, but also in research institu institutes. And I'm also doing, um, I'm self-employed and doing consulting work at companies, uh, primarily helping them uh, with test automation, CI and DevOps. Uh, related stuff. So that's that's the background. So wh why what did I start to learn Crystal? So the point is that I, I looked at this website called Module Counts uh, that uh, lists various programming languages and a couple of other things and um, their respective uh, repository of their third-party registries. So it was CPAN for Perl or PyPI uh, uh, for Python and the number of uh, these packages in each, each one of them. And for Crystal, it listed, uh, first of all, it, it listed the language called Crystal that I've never heard about uh, before. And then, then there was Crystal Shards.xyz that was listed as uh, the central repository database of, um, of these third party packages. And I found out that it's actually just a thin wrapper around the API of, of GitHub. So I thought to myself, I can do better. And uh, I, I think I could do better because I have contributed uh, some code to MetaCPAN, which is the similar website for Perl. And I've been working on a, pro a project called PyDigger that's collecting data about uh, packages in Python. So I set out to write something in, in Crystal. And by the way, uh, my slides are available and I put the link in the, in the chat so you can uh, uh, follow the slides there and follow the links there if you are bored with the talk. So when I start learning a programming language, I do basically two things, uh, um, but not only for programming languages, other things as well. I try to develop an application, but I already had this idea of the application. And I'm also preparing slides for a training course uh, where I really have these uh, small examples, uh, small snippets of code of the language. And I can go over uh, various things that uh, the language needs, that the programmer needs, and uh, that's what I'm doing. And uh, that's the link to the slides uh, of the course. So I started to learn Crystal uh, on 15th of May. Uh, I know the exact second because that's when I committed the first uh, change to my slides repository with Crystal. And four days later, I started to write this application called Crystal Mine. And about two and a half weeks later, I was confident enough with the project. It was ugly, but I was confident enough with the data that I uh, uh, posted a link on the Crystal Forum uh, because there was a question uh, about some sort of topic and the, the, um, this website had the data uh, for this. And it was all really nice until four hours later when Johannes Müller pointed me to the shard box, which actually does all of the things that I wanted to do or most of the things I wanted to do. So, well, that's uh, where uh, my project goes. And Shardbox looks way better than I could ever Im imagine to write a, a website. I'm really not a front-end uh, developer. So there's no project now, but what did I learn? Okay. What did I learn uh, while I was writing uh, this application? I um, can talk about two issues. One of them is Crystal, the language in general, and web development in Crystal. So Crystal is fun. I mean, most of you probably know Crystal way better than I do uh, here in the, at the conference. Uh, it is a nice syntax. I don't have uh, much background in Ruby. I touched here and there, but it was nice. Uh, there are two things that I really liked, which, which is taken from basically from, I think, a quote from Larry Wall, uh, creator of Perl. One of them uh, is making uh, the easy things easy and the hard things possible. And uh, Crystal is definitely there, uh, making the easy things easy. And what considered easy, for example, today is just parsing JSON or YAML files. Uh, these are really easy, is expected to be easy, and they are easy. Uh, I think the hard thing actually with programming languages is not, not only providing the easy things easy right now, but making sure that 20 years from now, when all kinds of other things that are not even, doesn't, don't even exist now, like YAML and JSON didn't exist uh, like 20 years ago, uh, but 20 years from now, uh, will the new things will be easy? Those things that will be um, expected to be easy will be still easy in the language. And that's gonna be the interesting part for Crystal as well. 
The other thing is Tim Toady, or there is more than one way to do it. That's another quote from Larry Wall. Uh, most programming languages actually have very uh, a lot of things, a lot of ways to do all kinds of things, including Python, even though they don't admit it. Uh, and Crystal is definitely true. Uh, every it has lots of lots of objects. Every object has lots of methods, and you can do all kinds of things in in many uh, different ways. Um, this means that the the language is not small. This means that uh, it has a long le long uh, learning curve. You have to invest a lot in uh, Crystal in order to be really proficient at the language. In order in, in really in to know uh, the language and to be able to use it in in a good way. On the other hand, uh, this learning curve is also shallow, meaning uh, only after a few hours you can already uh, be productive, and then from there you can go on and learn the language. So that's a nice thing. Shards are the packages and the third-party packages um, of Crystal. Uh, it's nice that it's easy to install them. Uh, it's less nice that there are only a few of them, relatively speaking, to the other programming languages. So, of course, the language is new, uh, so we can expect it that there are not many, not that many of these uh, shards. Uh, it's also an opportunity because now you can go and uh, implement your version of whatever you are expected to, to be there. And you already heard it in uh, the previous talks that people are implementing their needs uh, in Crystal. Another issue is how, can, how easy or how hard, hard it is to find a shard uh, because there is no central database of shards. Uh, that's relatively hard. That's actually what the uh, shard box will be able to, to solve. What I would like to see also is that the shards command will also have a search option because I live on the command line. I don't know what is this web thing. So I just live on the command line. I would like to be able to search there. And then I would be, like to be able to type in shards install and the name of the package without manually editing the, the YAML file. And it would add to the YAML file. Uh, the actual information needed to install that uh, shard. Another issue is the shards. Uh, this is currently an issue, is uh, the problem that many shards uh, define uh, a minimum required crystal version, but many of them also require a maximum version number, and that's less than 1.0. So they, today, when I'm using uh, uh, crystal 1.0, uh, in order to install many for many of the shards, in order to install them, I also have to provide this ignore crystal version that doesn't help with the confidence building. Uh, it's the, the shards actually work, so that's not the problem. The problem is only the definition that uh, they are not supposed to or not expected to work um, on the version 1.0. That I think can be fixed quite easily, and I hope that will be done uh, soon. There are a couple of other things that I, I really liked, uh, for example, the crystal 2 format that the built-in formatting tool uh, of Crystal that reduces the, this uh, the fight over how to format the certain code. Uh, I actually don't really like the, stand, the, the default way of uh, two-space indentation, but well, you have to accept things with the, the way they are. Uh, but I really like the, the fact that it's standardized. I like the fact that there is a good uh, linter already. Uh, linting helps with uh, imp even even improving my own code. So I'm writing some code, and linter can tell me, okay, you can write it in, in a better way. Spectator is um, so Crystal comes with a testing framework. Spectator is something that uh, is supposed to be a way better uh, testing framework. I haven't uh, tried it. I just see it, so it like uh, yesterday, I think, but I thought uh, to point it out. There is also a tool for code coverage. Haven't tried this one either. Uh, it's, I think, in pre beta or pre alpha or whatever version. Uh, but I'm happy that it's already uh, there is work on, the, on that. Uh, CI and GitHub Actions. So, CI is something that I think is really important for all code. And I'm really glad that there is a, this GitHub Actions configurator. Uh, that allows you to mark some checkboxes and it will create you. Uh, default or a, a simple uh, configuration file for GitHub Actions, and that will allow you to run GitHub Actions on your uh, shard or on your Crystal project. So that's nice. Uh, I haven't heard about smoking Crystal. I think in the uh, chat, there are some people who are smoking uh, Crystal. So I would like to see more, uh, see how it's worked, uh, Crystal smoking and shard smoking, meaning uh, that end users running their tests on their various machines in order to provide feedback to the authors and to the other users of the 
of these uh, packages, either the language or the shards. About the language, uh, there were a couple of surprises uh, with the language. Uh, first of all, I have no, I didn't have any clue what this question mark and exclamation marks uh, mean at the end of all kinds of things. And then there are these things where you have an exclamation mark at the beginning and the question mark at the end. And it's like, okay, what does that mean? Um, and if there are already these cards that are corrected, then why don't we use other Unicode characters? For example, the, the uh, upside down question mark and the exclamation mark. I mean, many people here speak, uh, speak Spanish, so I think it would be natural just to introduce these also to the programming language and you, emojis as well. So question mark, uh, just a quick explanation. I found these three different use cases of question mark, but the problem that I found is that you can define a function, uh, your own function with a question mark at the end, and it can return anything. It doesn't have to return uh, a Boolean that I would have expected that a function with a question mark always returns a uh, Boolean. But what, what can I say? Exclamation mark. So exclamation mark used for emphasizing something. So there is the P uh, function or, or statement or whatever it is that. Uh, it does something. And the P exclamation mark does the same thing, but even more so. So that's that's good, uh, funny. Uh, then there, then there's another thing that um, it, for certain objects, immutable object, uh, mutable objects like the hash, you can have a method call like reject that will return um, uh, the same hash or a subset of the hash or some variation of that hash. And if you do it with an exclamation mark, then it will do it in place, so making it will change that hash. On the other hand, there is a method called delete without an exclamation mark that already is working in place. So there is a certain level of inconsistency in between when you put in a, a question uh, exclamation mark. I actually understand why delete doesn't need an exclamation mark, uh, but it's strange. Uh, as of web frameworks, I, there's a list of a couple of web frameworks. The three main ones I found uh, were Ember, Camel, and Lucky. I tried all three of, three of them. Uh, very quickly, I gave up on both Ember and on Lucky because I felt that the installation, the setup method is a way too complex for my little understanding. Uh, but Camel was really, really simple to get started with it. It might be not as powerful as the other, three, other two, uh, but this is also seems to be the most popular one, uh, according to stars, according to all kinds of other measurements. Uh, the big problem I found is with web development and in Crystal, that Crystal has to be compiled all the time uh, in order to get start, uh, started, and the compilation is relatively sm uh, slow. And even the default templating system, uh, it needs to be compiled. So even if I just change something for the templating system, that's, uh, well, it's a little bit problematic. It's, it makes it slower uh, to develop some code. On the other hand, there is Cringer, uh, which is a uh, Crystal implementation of the Jinja templating system uh, by Johannes Müller. And that doesn't need the compilation. There's at least the HTML part doesn't need uh, the compilation part. So that's nice. And then there, just to mention the short box that I mentioned earlier. So that's good. That's sort of the future of my project, which is written, written by Johannes Müller again. Uh, it was written, uh, it's you're using Camel and Cringer and PostgreSQL and probably other, tons of other things. I think Johannes is working on um, re replacing Camel with some, something else, maybe not, I don't know. So that's uh, just one thing to mention. Uh, and about the future, primarily for myself. So I plan to contribute to the short box now, uh, instead of trying to uh, writing my own version of it. Uh, I'll plan to contribute to various shards, especially in the areas of writing tests and setting up CI system and so on. I really would like to have some pair programming sessions with other crystal programmers, uh, even beginners and uh, so beginners, advanced users. I mean, people who are even more beginner than I am. And um, uh, now that I have uh, many of the slides from the Crystal course, I decided to, to run a Crystal course. So from next week, I'm actually going to run a, a, a course on Crystal in which I expect to learn way more than uh, my students. But well, that is how the first time I run a course happens. And hopefully I can convert uh, the slides uh, and the text uh, behind it uh, to a book. Um, so that's uh, about it. Um, that's when I end uh, my, my slides. There is no time, I guess, for questions and answers here, but I am going to be uh, around in Discord and you can also find me in other places uh, um, on the internet. So thank you very much for listening. 
I mean, I'm okay. So I'm okay with you answering questions. You want to go ahead, you can go ahead. No problem. I up to up to the uh, organizers. Well, uh, let me do one question from Vlad, and then we'll wrap it up. It's a it's okay. a nice question. It's a somewhat quick one. Would you read? Would you recommend Crystal as a first language to teach someone programming? Mm, now they should learn C or Assembler or something, <laughs> <laughs> and then learn something that they uh, as much I as I. Yeah. It's 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 it's. Uh, I mean, it, there is two. There are these two, two, two schools of thoughts. One of them is to make them make them uh, sweat and then give them something nice. Uh, and other school is uh, give them something that they enjoy and then they enjoy programming and they will continue and some of them will explore other languages. So I guess yeah, Crystal could be um, a, a nice language for that uh, as well. Awesome. I would love to chat more about that. And I might find you in the alpha channel. For those who are wondering, there is a channel both for voice and for chat. And hopefully um, you are interested in joining that after the talk. Uh, but we are going to move on to the next talk. So thank you uh, so thank much. You, thank you.